storms. Whoa. Okay, some of these creatures are a little, little large. Oh, oh. Hello everyone, Thoranks is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, episode 160. We're actually about to leave this really neat, fiery system. The oranges and the reds and the yellows in the background of space. We created our first ever racetrack of the Thranks Pre. I haven't really thought of a, a system name yet that's catchy yet identifiable. We'll see. But of course, we have our base here, and we gave out the portal coordinates last episode, vowing to leave in this episode. Now, I did get all the uh, language that I could learn from the space station behind us, but one of the things I wanted to point out before I was in a hurry to leave this system was that this system, for those that may want a portal here or set up a base here or come race, actually has one of each of the hazard planets. In fact... If the, yes, if the abandoned planet was a desert planet, we would actually have all six types of planets for ore, because you have a tropical planet, and then you have a hot, a cold, a corrosive, and a radioactive. It's actually a really neat, really neat system. I like the look of the sun and the atmosphere the way a planet looks with that stark yellow background behind it. Pretty neat. Okay, so just a little bit of gee whiz about the system we were in. Now, as you can see... What? No, I don't really care about Atlas Station. Thanks, though. Okay, cool. Thanks. No, thank you. Cool story. No, I don't want to do that. Thank you. Alright, so we actually stayed relatively close to everything. So you can see, let's see, where is the the Thranxian Expanse would be here. Yep. So we're actually very, very close to that. So anybody that can portal to there for the race, or you could, if you have a base here at the Thranxian Expanse, then as soon as, uh, it's currently called Gitla, I will, however, will, however, be changing its name. Um, next up on our list, though, I think should be an Uncharted, shouldn't it? Like, what is this one all about? Why is this green star not have an available conflict level? It says it's Corvax Scientific. Like, what does that even mean? Is it just one star? No, it's not. It's one, two, three, four, five, four, five planets on the one star. Sorry, I said star, I meant planets. Five planets, one moon with no conflict data available. I suppose we're going to have to go here next. Let's see. Oh my. I guess that's why we're unable to get conflict data? No, it must have just been the luck of the draw. Alright, hold on. It's just my exploration ship, but... We can put down... We can put down some pirates. Here's our data injection. <laughs> Look at those guys. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty neat looking capital ship though, I have to I have to say. Hold on, somebody's trying to outmaneuver us here. Yep, they're doing little loops. Okay. It's not all that, not all that hard once you get enough S-Class modules on. Ooh, this one's got a bit of speed. Wow. It is a neat capital ship. It's interesting that the nebula is so similarly colored over here. Do you notice that as well? 
That to me seems unusual. Maybe it's because we didn't travel far? You know, I don't think I've ever intentionally stayed so close to one area to be able to check that. Okay, we're on the other side of the capital ship from this fighter, this pirate here. Trying to hide out, trying to be sneaky. Nope. You're going away. It's a pretty good size capital ship. Are we on the underbelly of it? Is that what's happening? Must be. Hey, yes, end communication. Good. Let us let us come aboard. Ah, here it is. That's a pretty good size. Oh, let's see. Let's see what class it is. Let's see what we're dealing with. I mean, if anything, we have the money. I feel like at this point, if it's even a remotely neat looking capital ship, we have to investigate it. Because if we get either an A or an S class with maxed out or near maxed out inventory, we're going to pull the trigger on it so quickly. We're going to sell our old sell our old freighter so fast. So fast. What about all that stuff we have on our freighter? Well, it's replaceable, right? Look at the bridge of this one. With those massive cargo containers. Okay, let's see the profile. Show me, Commander Costrain. I would like to inspect your freighter for certain. An A-Class 34. Look at this thing. And all the hyperdrive technology slots are next to each other. I mean... Look at this thing. I feel like we have to. I feel like there's no debate, no discussion. It's just we're making a purchase. We're making a purchase towards our future at this point. It's A class. And look at that inventory. Nah, the inventory alone is reason enough to do it. The fact that it's an A class, that means and it's not I don't think I don't think thirty four is perfect inventory. I think it goes up to, what, 36, or does it go up past that? I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I think it's pretty close. It's close to perfect inventory. It's not perfect, but it's not an S-Class either. So for 136 million units, that's still, that's not even, it's not even half, effectively. Hmm. We're doing it. We are doing it. Oh, yeah. I salute you. Now, let me look outside as my... Ugh. I wanted to watch my fleet warp in. Oh, I fear that they did it without me being able to see. That's okay. Oh, it's my freighter now. So now we lost all the stuff on the freighter because I didn't get to convert it. Right? So we did lose all those resources, as I understand it. Now... I know we. I know that we could have just gone back and and cashed everything in, but the question would have become: Would this ship have waited around long enough for us to do it? And I don't think it it would have. Which ultimately, that's just the way it goes. Now we might look at. Let's see if we can build a base salvage capsule in here. Let's see. I kind of want. Here we go. We'll just put it right at the end of this hallway here. Okay, so it does. It is showing that there's a previous base item cache in it to retrieve. So we're not going to retrieve it yet. But we are going to figure out our command stations and such. Oh, this is exciting! New capital ship. Oh, we had so much money, and look, now we're still at 259 million units. 
Ugh, the game is rapidly starting to really come together for us and enable us to focus on things that well and truly matter. All right, let's go ahead. Let's let's skip off this freighter for a moment. And let's just eyeball it from the outside here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Cuz we should be dealing with dang. Dang. What an improvement over the previous capital ship. And look, there's our fleet behind it. It's quite an extensive little fleet. Okay, so we are looking at a similar system gated with this goldenrod sort of orange to uh, not quite blood orange. That's a little bit of like tang, makes me think of. Yeah, just some dark orange. That's like a pumpkin. Okay, now that's that's more blood orange. Yep, a little hue of magenta. Oh, what have we here? Oceans of solid gold on the deathly green anomaly. What? This is really a thing. Um, okay. No, I, I can't. I can't justify going anywhere else first. No, okay. Let's just look. I'm just curious. What's this moon? A bleak moon. A desert moon. That's cool. Deathly green anomaly. Interesting. It's not activated emerald, so it's not any kind of extreme weather. The oceans appear gold and to cover most of the planet. I don't see a lot of land mass, actually. It could be. It could be that we have already discovered our next race planet. Maybe. Oh, I probably should have scanned the other planets in this system. No, we're just going to have to wait. We'll know it. We'll know it when we find it. I have no idea what kind of planet this is about to be. Look at those striations under the water, like deep, deep water channels. Some sort of tectonic something. Hold on. Coming in a little, a little hot, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna pull it back, pull it back, and give a scan. What is going on here? The atmosphere's got the sort of hue and polarization to it. Okay, this ocean doesn't appear very deep at all, actually. Some sort of ultraviolet light? What's happening? Echoes of acid. Corrosive planet? Some large protrusions growing out of the land. I imagine they look similar to this, maybe? Maybe we're just too far in the ocean to notice. But there's a lot of shallow sections here, and it looked like there were some deep ruts from, from space. It's not an anomaly planet. Nutrients. That creature's not going to hurt us. Look at these shallows here. Oh my. It's almost like the water has this iridescent quality to it. Like a sheen. Like a rainbow sheen. Oh, look at that. No, there are significantly large, awkward, rocky growths here. There's almost this iridescence in the atmosphere as well. See if I just go down in the water. What sort of a conclusion I come up with? Some jellyfish. Some awkward swimmers. Okay. They look like hummingbird fish. More jellyfish. All right. Well, we still need to earn units. We just spent a lot of them. What is that? 
Drifts on currents, eats coral. Oh, it's like a... It's like a water mammal, isn't it? Oh, it is! Strongly radioactive. Oh. What an awkward little planet. And it's very much like this weirdly iridescent sort of feel to it. Hmm, those creatures look the same as the other ones. Submerged relic. This is an interesting planet, but it doesn't seem as... Like, I feel like the uniqueness of this planet has yet to be discovered. It's, sh it's a little shimmery. It's a little colorful. This is it's like silently trying to masquerade as the Lisa Frank planet. Maybe if the bubbles were here and more numerous. The water does seem to change color, as does the sky. Feels like I'm looking at it through a filter. Maybe we need to get away from the water a little bit. Maybe we need to see what this planet looks like at night. I bet that's it. Let's head away from the sun for a little bit. The sun be, could be inflating our experience to be... Whoa, hold on. That's a predator-looking creature. Or a submissive, tuber-eating herbivore. It's an elderly specimen. Okay. I like that so far. No real predators to speak of. Well, there doesn't seem to be a lot of land on this planet, but let's go see if we can find some of it. Get a little bit away from the sun. See if we can see what happens when we do that. Okay, the, so the land appears to have these awkward rock formations growing out of it. And they do appear to be moving. Some sort of force driving them. Okay, there is more land over here. Oh my. Some sort of awkward palm trees and some sort of vol volcano tectonics, it looks like. All of these are some form of volcanic island, is what I'm getting. And the trees here, whatever they're soaking up in this atmosphere is extreme they are giant, and these rock formations are right there with them. Okay, so this is a little bit of sunset, it looks like. I think we're just going to keep going away from the sun. Let's go ahead, let's land up here. Let's see what we can get out of this world if we just, if we just land up here. Because in the sunset... The iridescence is starting to become very noticeable. So look at all the different colors the sky is going through right now. What time is this register as? 1807 is what the HUD says. Look at the awkward terrain generation. Oh, it's a, it's a crashed freighter. Look, look at the color changes. Oh, the colors, Duke, the colors. I'm colorblind, kid. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about when I say that. I'm just curious. Let's see how many people answer up to that. Um, I think it's going to be worth checking out. So, I guess we'll go ahead and we'll do it. Look at this place, though. This has to be our next race course. This is it. Look at this. 
I think this is where we settle down. It's here. Look at these trees. Oh, my jungle. And it's starting to get very violet in the shadows. So I'm curious to see what all this iridescence equals at night. It might not equal anything. It could just be a function of the sun and the sunlight and how everything seems to have a this awkward rainbow hue. But it might not do anything at night without the light to activate it. It could be depending on that white light to colorize everything. Okay, so it looks like the freighter here has had a lot of work done to it. Oh, look at that. What the heck? No, 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 no. We got to stop for a second because that is our picture. It has to be, everyone. It has to be. Uh, I don't really want to clobber too much of the sky with it. Hold on, hold on. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Look at the sky now. Interesting. And now everything on the surface just seems this weird sort of blue, hazy the ocean. What does the ocean look like? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is definitely going to be the spot of our new base. I don't think we're going to build a beacon. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and build a base computer here. We are going to come back. We're going to come back to this area and create a little place of operations slash race course right down here in the jungle with all the terrain try to stay away from the coasts as much as possible on a planet that's mostly ocean maybe but I know one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go fly over to where the ocean is while we don't have daylight to see what this odd colorization is going to do to the water when you're not in daylight Ooh, careful, careful. Are you kidding me? Now, can we turn around and back up and just look at what the heck I hit that was so up in my way up here? It's just big rocks. It's real big rocks. Look at this jungle. <laughs> I have no clue what to make of this planet. It's almost like, I don't want to say radioactive. It has this weird high energy particle feel to it. And look underwater. It's plain. It's very plain when the sun is down. Yeah, you got a few things lit up. I don't know. We can't really do a water base if we're trying to do race courses. Like a water base and its purpose has to sort of be its own thing. This planet could be could be neat for an underwater base. I just wish the water was more clear. Let's look at what other planets are in this system. Gosh, we rushed over here, and I feel like we found a great spot to start, but we don't even know what else is in this system yet. Let's take a gander at a couple of these, shall we? An empty planet. Just empty, huh? 
That's pretty bad. A decaying nuclear planet. With ancient bones. Ooh, look at this thing looking all scorched up in the distance. Corrosive planet. Looking like brown and red lava molten stuff. That's interesting. And what was the moon? We had a moon, did we not? A bleak moon. And a green, humid planet with rings? Okay. I'll bite. Let's check out this desert moon, shall we? It's not an extreme desert, but we want to catch it on the planet sides, uh, see what kind of vista we can get. Oof. In the middle of a firestorm. Looks like man-made ruins or structures in the terrain embedded into the sand. Hold on, low visibility. All right. You can you can tell the sky is thick with sand, hot sand. It's pulling the clouds down. Sentinels are reporting hostile characteristics on this planet. Recommend we don't stay here too long. We're going to catalog this planet for posterity, and then we're going to leave. Like many sentinel planets, you can see the Gravitino balls are everywhere. But this moon... This moon really just has sort of a permanent sandstorm going on. Whoa, look at this creature. Remembers faces, eats mostly rocks. Okay, the weather advisory says infrequent dust storms. Whoa. Okay, some of these creatures are a little little large. <laughs> and by some of them I mean some of the some of the really large ones. Gentle, unknown. Whoa. Easy does it. Okay, well now the sky appears not really dark at all, although it's interesting knowing that this is the moon of the planet we were just on. A little desert moon. We've got to get close. Can I feed you? Are you going to... No, no, no. No, no. Don't. Please don't make this about that. All right, okay, all right. We don't have to shoot each other. This can just be a thing. We just move on our way. You're friendly, I'm friendly. Oh, look at these. Oh, are they intelligent? Asymptotic, watchful, processes dirt. This one's elderly, has tiny organs. Come here, little guys. Oh, they're, they're like, he's running at me. No, wait. I have kobolds or whatever it is that you eat. No smiley face from you. Oh. Oh, it's eating it. Hi. On some random moon in the middle of nowhere, I just made a friend. Hold on. It's like, hey, come here. Let me show you my home. All right. What you got? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it was like an it was like an eclipse. Hold on. Let's see if I can scan these flying life forms. Unpredictable. Eats small trees. These little cute koala bears with feathers. They're pretty cool. All right. It is what it is at this point. Wait a second. <gasps> Ooh! Sack Venom. Oh. Oh, that's just one of the things those sentinels are guarding on this planet. No, 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 no. Come on. I didn't. You're scaring K 
koala feathers. You make me lose my new friend. I'm gonna be so disappointed in you. All right, well, if we have to jump over this cliff, then we just have to jump over it. Look at the giants on this planet. I guess I didn't realize that even the sack Venom was guarded on this planet. Makes sense, though. Everything's guarded on this moon. Keep calling it a planet. It is not. It is but a satellite. Oh, suppression me measures triggered. Come on. I think this is our next planet. Let's line up on it. We've already been to the Deathly Green planet. Alright, we're punching out of the atmosphere. Heading over to the empty planet. Now, the planets that I usually write off as always being the same, I'm going to try to scrutinize a little more thoroughly. I know that most of the time these empty planets definitely do all feel the same, but we've already determined that the color of the nebula and the star as seen from the ground can radically affect the way that these planets feel. Don't forget that day and night can have equally different colorizations. Alright, let's land on the day side first. We'll get a good, good look at that. So you can see we are getting that stark contrast. All right, let's go ahead and let's land on top of this mountain. This mountain appears to have pretty good elevation over everything. Okay, it is not clear to land. We're going to keep trying. There we go. Okay. Hmm. So there's the star. It doesn't really punch through the haze. So this planet has a lot of dust and haze on it, I'm noticing. Look how high up we are on this mountain, though. This is a significant mountain. It might be easy to underestimate just how incredibly high we are off the surface because we swooped in on this rock formation rather quickly upon atmospheric entry, or low atmospheric entry. But you can see even the sun got a little dimmer once we broke into this, this haze pocket or this dust pocket that is the atmosphere of this planet. You can see in great detail the uh, the deathly green planet there with its bleak moon. The rip-roaring nebula colors, that golden rod cutting through there. I love how those silhouette like that. I think we'll get another picture of this just to have it. All right, let's get back up to the top here. Let's see if we can get our feel for this planet without having to delve down into it too much. I mean, this is pretty insane here. But yeah, we're still dealing with a haze. Even this plateau, it wants to ride off onto the deep end over on that side, but over here it stays up a bit. It's easy to feel like this planet's trying to push me up out of its little dust atmosphere on this pillar. 
Alright, let's see what we have in here. Oh, there's absolutely life on, on this section here. So there is some kind of moisture inside the dust clumps. Yep, you can hear it dripping down these formations. It coalesced from toxic dust. That sounds about right. <laughs> On a planet that's really just a huge rock. When we find the Mount Everest of that rock, I mean, I don't know. This this might be a neat little area worth taking, to be honest. The other planet is cool, though. See, I want to love them all. But just look how high you get over here. Look at this. It's, like, hard to wrap my head around. I feel like the terrain is going to have trouble loading if I just jump off of here. Look at all these colors. It's just going to have to be one of those things that when you come to do the races, you got to stop by all the sites to see. So we'll have to leave something here. Maybe, maybe a beacon? I think a beacon is probably a good thing. Just put it kind of right on the top of this mountain. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you would do with that information, but this is a spectacular point for it to just be unmapped. Look at that. It seems a little kind of tall over there, but this this does feel like. Well, maybe not. That might be taller. But you can see the terrain definitely drops off in the other direction. All right. Okay. Beacon is marked. We should do that, though. We should leave little beacons behind at points of interest, even if we're not going to put a base on everything. Let's go ahead and we'll hop up. We'll just kind of fly down just to see. Yeah, exactly. How much, how much that terrain had to, had to load compared to being up there. All right. That is two planets and the moon explored. Where to next? Corrosive planet. I think that's probably a good call. Activated emerald means we're going to be dealing with some very serious corrosive storms. And it does appear like this planet indeed has an ocean. So I would imagine a, quite a significant hydrosphere. Let's go sail, put this magnetized ferrite in our exosuit. Okay, and then, oh, and then our freighter. Mm -mm -mm. This makes me feel so good. Although I'm sad about all the decorations that we had been storing in there. It was silly. If I would have thought that through, I probably would not have done it that way. But what's done is done at this point. Think, are we able to install the technology now, or no? I need a little bit of all my fancy space metals and a couple other components, so that's fine. So this is the planet with red oceans and sort of brown terrain as a corrosive planet. It's interesting. Let's hit the part of the ocean that's got daylight right now, currently. Actually, I'd like to see how much of that side of the planet is ocean compared to land. So let's take sort of a wide punch across the section here. Yep, you can see it changes to ocean almost right away. Yeah, in fact, most of this day site appears to be ocean.
cut a path through here so we can get a little bit of visibility. That, that does look a lot like ocean, but there is another continent on the other side, so we're going to go to that. Yellow atmosphere, okay. Yellow green, lime green. Okay, the terrain appears to have a pretty high base elevation above sea level. Hold on. Some thick clouds. Oh no, it's that neon yellow again. Let's slow down. Oh, it's like impossible to see. Oh my goodness. I can't I can't even I don't even know how to handle that. Let's uh let's just put the let's put the craft down. Wow. Pouring toxic rain. Okay. Alright. And it is too, it's just pouring toxic rain. Oh look, no wonder the oceans are almost completely taken over with red algae. Oh yeah, okay, alright. Doesn't look too cloudy though. It's not too bad. I mean, as far as ocean planets go. Wow. We're gonna have to start using some ammonia rather quickly to keep our shields running. Whoa! It's a whole social gathering of adult Moncratiums. And they feast on Gravitino balls. But the Sentinels don't like that. Okay, well it starts looking lime green once you get a good layer of this toxic funk in your intake system and your visor can't keep your mask clear anymore. Yeah, it starts looking lime green. Let's, let's figure out what we're going to do here. This is quite an oppressive planet. It's bright, it's hard to see. It's just extremely toxic via a, a non-stop deluge of rain, which just impedes visibility. All right, let's see if we can find a larger landmass and get away from the sun now. We've seen the daytime side is just blinding. Alright, well, we're not going to find any way away from the sun over there, so... There you go. Nice large land mass, just a few lakes here and there. And we're going to get rid of some of that sun that's turning the atmosphere into a giant flashlight. Okay, the terrain still seems to jump up and down. Very steep cliffs all around. There's still delineation between two different types of materials. One of them does look like some sort of metal. The toxic rain is non-stop on this planet. As we feared. many different tiers of elevation. Including some very significant mountains. It appears as if all caves deep enough actually do re in fact return to the water table on this planet. Ooh, look at that creature. Hold on, we gotta get a better view. Looks like a predator to me. A Maronia. Calm eats insects and grubs. Mm, 
maybe not a predator? I don't know. That sounds carnivorous. Okay, now that the sun's gone away, the atmosphere is not blindingly blight anymore. Or, I'm sorry, blindingly bright. Is that what I said? Anyways, but now you still have this rain. And now the sky turns a weird color for a toxic planet. This orange is, I imagine, really cool on a hot planet at night. It even does okay on the airless or the tropical, but desert. I'm not feeling it on the toxic because you got the green. It starts to cover your screen, green and orange. Yeah. I mean, it's a neat little planet. But we're going to depart. But if you like any of the planets that you see in this system, just remember that once you start following the Thranks pre-race, then you'll be able to swing by and see any of these planets that you want. Alright, once we pulse jump around this planet, we'll start getting our, our trajectory laid out here. So that's the empty planet. Yep, that's the odd planet with the moon. This one is the humid planet. Three minutes by pulse engine. Whoa. About this one. Decaying nuclear planet with ancient bones. There we go. Had trouble engaging the pulse engine. At least that one has ancient bones, so we can we can go looking for ancient bones. Let's take a look at our inventory. It's not too clobbered, actually. Everything's sort of in its right location. Our new freighter, though. Hmm. Hyperdrive range, 29%. Not the best, it's just an A-class, but goodness, an A-class with 34 slots. It felt wrong to pass it up, not when it looks so nice. It does look nice. We probably could send over our dihydrogen and, in essence, start crafting freighter fuel. Alright, so it's missing the dihydrogen at that point. Yep. Okay. Let's see if we can hit the Terminator. I don't really know if I want the the daytime or the nighttime experience with this planet. You're gonna scan me? Nah. That's too bad. Oh. We're gonna have our fight right here in the gravity well of the planet, huh? Okay. Oh, that's right. My frigate fleet is in this system. I don't know if you knew that. There you go. Put it on them. Yep. There you go. Boom. Thank you for the lemium. Okay, this one has a little bit of shields. There you go, that times two. A shield quadrant in the aft is not as strong. Alright. 
now as we were. Coming in on this high energy radiation planet. No visible water signs detected. Looks like there used to be water once upon a time, just judging by the striations in the land. It's like some sort of runoff. The atmosphere is thick, but it's hard to tell about its coloration at this time of day. We do look to be in sunset. Let's go ahead and put things down here. This looks a bit like the corrosive planet we just came from. Tracking a building up ahead. Let's go ahead and find ourselves a parking spot if we can. Nope. Looks like it's uh, an old trade beacon somebody had up. All right. Let's make a land. Go ahead and save and chart. Energetic storms on this planet, okay? The windswept plains of Dostos. It's purple. I kind of like radioactive planet with purple. I can get behind that. Got some little birds. Easily scared, eats pollen. Natural burial site. Let's do one of these. Mutant plant. Oh, I don't really want to do the mutant plant so much. But let's, let's indeed check out a natural burial site. There we go, recharge that life support just in time. It still looks most like mostly desert. No, I guess there is some some sort of fungus and scrubbiness growing here. Yeah, these do feel a little bit like forests. And look at all this over here. That yellow and that purple does look really neat together. Not a lot of creatures coming out to say hi. Alright, so it looks like we just have this one natural burial site here. Let's go ahead and excavate a little bit. Oh, it looks like there's another one. Oh, another one. A couple of them. Look at that. And little little clusters, huh? Some grubby bones. Grubby skeletal fragments. Is there more? How do I know if there's more? I guess they would have popped up imperfect bone fragments. That's a neat little bit of cache. It says there's another one much further away. We might just sell what we have. We don't really need the money. I think that's where we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I guess everybody gets closer to an hour episode for, for today, which that's fine. Um, but this has been No Man's Sky, episode 160. I'm going to try and get a little bit of racetrack work done in this system in between this episode and next. Continue exploring what we have here before pressing on to the next system. Hope you've had a good time watching. 
because as always, I have had a good time playing. Be sure to come back next time, but until then, take care.